Today, I'm going to teach you how to reverse the root cause of high blood sugar problems for good. Most people are trying to treat high blood sugar, but very few are actually fixing the root problem. You can take medications, cut carbs, or try every new diet out there. But if you don't address why your blood sugar is high in the first place, then you're just managing symptoms. I'm going to show you four science-backed hacks that target the root cause. Insulin resistance. So your body can start processing sugar the way that it's supposed to again. No extremes, no starvation, just proven practical changes that restore insulin sensitivity naturally. Number one, turning your muscles into glucose vacuums. When it comes to reversing insulin resistance, nothing compares to building more muscle. And I'm going to show you the exact routine to start shedding fat and become more toned. Think of your muscles as glucose vacuums. They love sucking up glucose when they are activated. But let me ask you a question. Have you ever tried to vacuum a carpet with your vacuum turned off? Probably not, right? It doesn't matter how good your vacuum is. If it's not powered on, it's not cleaning anything. Your muscles work in the exact same way. When they are inactive, they are basically unplugged. But the moment you start moving, walking, climbing stairs, squatting, lifting, you switch them on and suddenly they become one of the most powerful glucose sucking machines in your entire body. The more you activate them and the stronger they become, the more glucose that they can clear at any given time. As a matter of fact, a meta-analysis of 23 randomized controlled trials found that regular resistance training significantly improved insulin sensitivity in people living with type 2 diabetes. And that improvement lasted for up to 72 hours after the training session was done. Here's why. Muscle is your body's largest glucose reservoir. When you train your muscles, you increase the amount of glucose transporters inside of them. These glucose transporters usually like to hang out in the middle of the cell, but when you activate your muscle fibers, they translocate to the outermost layer of your muscle cell and they facilitate the diffusion of glucose from the bloodstream and into the cell. So you're going to start with three full body workouts per week, about 30 minutes each. Focus on big movements that activate large muscle groups, squats, rows, lunges, presses. And don't worry if you're just starting because body weight or resistance bands are going to be more than enough. The trick is to not go longer than three days without training. That's when the insulin sensitizing effects of exercise start to fade. Comment bands below and I'll go ahead and send you my free resistance bands routine that is going to transform how your muscles utilize blood sugar. Think of resistance training as your metabolic reset button that you need to press every other day. Every workout you do is literally retraining your muscles on how to use glucose properly and clearing leftover sugar from your bloodstream at exponential rates. Comment bands below this video to download your free routine. Number two, clearing the fat from your cells. Most people blame carbs for insulin resistance, but two large clinical trials show something different. One study published in Diabetes Care found that saturated fat is more harmful for insulin sensitivity than carbs or unsaturated fats. This study showed that when you eat high amounts of saturated fat, your liver cells quite literally become clogged with it. And surprise, surprise, a fat clogged liver becomes insulin resistant, which causes it to dump extra glucose into your bloodstream. This is the reason why your morning 
blood sugar numbers can be high even if you barely ate carbohydrates the night before. It's not last night's food. It's your liver dumping glucose into the bloodstream because it became insulin resistant. If you're not familiar with which foods are high in saturated fats, don't worry. I'll give you a full guide on what to eat and what to avoid. This is the exact same framework that thousands of people have used to lower their blood sugar and reverse the root cause of the problem. Now, here's the part that most people miss. The solution isn't just removing the fat. It's also adding foods that help your body process and clear that fat. That's where fiber comes in. While saturated fat clogs your cells and blocks insulin signaling, fiber does the opposite. It feeds your gut bacteria, it reduces inflammation, and it slows down glucose absorption so your blood sugar can remain stable and your insulin receptors can recover. So here are the recommendations that help unclog your cells and restore insulin sensitivity. Keep a saturated fat below 6% of your total daily calorie consumption. Swap butter, cheese, and fatty meats with plant-based sources of fats like avocados, nuts, and seeds. Aim for 35 to 50 grams of fiber daily from beans, lentils, oats, fruits, and vegetables. Your meals should make insulin's job easier, not harder. And listen, you can still include animal products. The key is shifting your overall eating pattern towards more fiber and less saturated fat. This way, your cells will be able to respond to insulin again. If you want to see how this looks on a real plate, go ahead and comment guide below. I'll send you our free meal plans that help you reverse the root cause of high blood sugar and not just manage it. Number three, activating muscle contraction after meals. This one might be the simplest and most powerful lifestyle hack that you have in your toolbox. If you miss everything else, at least do this one. A randomized crossover trial done in people living with type 2 diabetes found that three 15-minute walks, one after each meal, lowered fasting blood sugar and A1C significantly more than one 45-minute walk done before breakfast. So why did this happen? Why were these the results? When you move after eating, your muscles contract rhythmically. And those contractions pull glucose out of the bloodstream without insulin. It's called contraction-mediated glucose uptake. And it's quite literally like turning on a glucose vacuum. So after every meal, or at least after your largest meal of the day, go on a 10 to 15 minute brisk walk. It's not about intensity, it's about timing. This is small habit compounds quickly, improving your fasting blood sugar and post-meal blood sugar levels within weeks. And lastly, number four, activating your metabolic switch, also known as the AMPK pathway. Now, this one may be the simplest out of all the hacks to become more insulin sensitive. All you have to do is take berberine daily. But let me explain why. Your cells have a master energy regulator known as the AMP activated protein kinase pathway, also known as AMPK. When it's turned on, your body shifts from storing energy to burning it, increasing glucose uptake, fat oxidation, and insulin sensitivity all at once. In other words, you burn more glucose instead of keeping it trapped in your bloodstream. A meta-analysis of 28 clinical trials found that berberine, a natural compound, activates AMPK and significantly lowers fasting blood sugar and A1C in people living with type 2 diabetes. The most effective dosage for lowering fasting blood sugar, post-meal blood sugar, and A1C levels was between 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams per day. Higher dosages didn't work better. As a matter of fact, they worked worse. The sweet spot for minimal side effects like an upset stomach seems to be between 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams 
per day. So here's the berberine protocol that we recommend based on the science from the study. The dosage should be 600 milligrams twice daily for a total of 1200 milligrams. For timing, it should be taken with breakfast and dinner. But if you're someone that skips breakfast, you can take it with lunch and dinner. I usually take one capsule as I start eating. The form is supposed to be berberine HCL, also known as berberine hydrochloride. This is the most studied form, the one that has been used in all randomized controlled trials showing blood sugar reductions. The duration that you should be taking berberine is about 12 weeks consistently in order to see fantastic results in insulin sensitivity. The berberine I personally take is pharmaceutical grade, third party tested and clinically dosed. I'll go ahead and leave a link below this video. Each capsule is 600 milligrams. So two capsules is 1200 milligrams, which is the recommended amount of active compounds to take for a full day. So if you're interested in taking berberine, take one capsule in the morning and one capsule in the evening. Now, combine it with movement and a diet that is high in fiber and low in saturated fats, and your results are going to be profound. So here's a big picture. Reversing high blood sugar levels is not about chasing symptoms. It's about fixing the reason why your body is struggling in the first place. And these four strategies that I just told you do exactly that. These aren't gimmicks. They are the exact mechanisms that your body uses to become more insulin sensitive. When you apply them consistently, here's what happens. Your fasting numbers start dropping, your post meal spikes flatten, your energy returns, and your metabolism finally starts working with you instead of against you. If this video helped you understand the root cause of high blood sugar levels, and more importantly, how to reverse this problem, please do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. I'll send you my free guide for perfect fasting blood sugar levels. This way you can start applying all four hacks starting today. So don't forget to comment guide below this video. You've got this and your best numbers are still ahead of you. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.